of reaction, rate of chemical reaction. There are four things we want to cover here, the kind of apparatus you use and how to draw it. Average rate, relative rate, not the same thing, and then rate graphs. Let's begin with the apparatus. You're frequently asked in a higher exam to draw the sort of apparatus you might use to prepare a gas. Let's say, for example, you were going to add zinc to hydrochloric acid and produce hydrogen gas. You remember the other product would be zinc chloride. So how would you collect the hydrogen gas and how would you prepare the hydrogen gas? Well, when it comes to preparation, something like this. You could have, for example, a conical flask. Now you need a tube coming out of the flask that the gas can escape from. But this tube must be above the liquid that the gas is coming out of. The tube must not go into the liquid. That is wrong. The tube must be above the surface so as the bubbles of gas come out of the liquid, they can rise up. However, you'll find a second tube going into the liquid. This second tube is probably where the acid is coming from. So it has to be drawn something like this. We have our acid going in here, there'd be zinc already in the container, and as hydrogen gas is produced, the hydrogen comes out of the flask. We have to be careful how we draw the stopper. Do not block the glass tubing. So there's how we might possibly make the gas. Collecting the gas, well the best method of collecting the gas is to use a gas syringe. Because this avoids problems of the gas dissolving in water. A gas syringe will look something like this as a movable piston. It's calibrated, which means you can see easily how much gas is being collected. Make a reasonable attempt at drawing the gas syringe. You could, as I'm sure you're aware, collect the gas over water. As I implied, one problem with that is that certain gases dissolve in water. If you're going to draw the gas being collected over water, and you want to know how much gas is being produced, this has to be a measuring cylinder. This must not be a test tube. A test tube would not be able to tell you the volume of gas being collected. So there. That's the first one dealt with. Apparatus. Average rate. If we did this experiment, what would we find? Well, we would find that initially, you know, at the start, the gas would come up very quickly. So if our vertical axis in this graph is volume of hydrogen, and we want to see how long it takes to collect the hydrogen gas, then what we find is that it came off rapidly to begin with, and it would gradually slow down until eventually, of course, it stopped being produced. Chemical reactions generally slow down like this. So the question is, how fast is the reaction? Well, to work at the speed of a reaction, there are two things you need to know. You, want, you need to know the speed or the rate of reaction. The two things you need to know are amount and time. You know, rate doesn't just apply to chemical reactions. You could have the rate at which I'm speaking. How many words, how many words am I speaking per minute? You could be in a car. How many miles or kilometers are you covering in an hour? Rate always compares a certain quantity in a certain time. So let's have a look at this graph. Let's say, for example, we wanted to know the rate between this point and this point. Now, you can see the rate is changing. It's gradually slowing down. So, strictly speaking, we should use the term average rate because it's not a constant rate. Basically, we need to know A, what the time interval is, and B, how much gas has been produced in that time interval. Let's come up with some numbers, will we? Let's say, for example, this is 10 seconds. Let's say this is 30 seconds. So we're dealing in terms of seconds. Watch out. The time could be minutes. It could be hours. It just depends. After 10 seconds, let's say we've collected 50 cubic centimetres of hydrogen. And let's say that after 30 seconds, obviously we've collected more. Let's say we're now up to 90 cubic centimetres of gas. What's the rate? What's the average rate? Well, we can see that the time interval is a 20 second time interval. So the time is 20 seconds. 
How much gas we've collected in that time? Well, we went from 50 up to 90 cubic centimetres. In other words, 40 cubic centimetres of gas was produced in 20 seconds. If you do the sum, 40 divided by 20 will come to, on average, 2 cubic centimetres per second. On average. Interestingly, it would be a little bit faster than that to begin with, and a little bit slower than that towards the end. But there's the average rate of production of hydrogen over that time interval. Easy. You just need to know the time interval and how much was formed in that time. So, that's average rate covered. What about relative rate? You could imagine doing an experiment where you didn't actually have an amount. In this experiment, it's very obvious how much gas is being collected. But there are some experiments you've done where it isn't an amount. Here's a classic example. You could have an experiment where you've got chemical A in a beaker and you're adding the chemical B to it. When B is added to A, you start a timer. And you time how long it takes for, say, a colour to change. And when the colour changes, you stop timing. You have a time, but nothing else. Let's say, for example, that when A is added to B, after a certain amount of time, for example, 30 seconds, the colour changes. How fast is this reaction? There's no amount, only a time. In a situation like this, we can't come up with the actual rate, we have to talk about relative rate. If you find that a difficult concept to grasp, think of this. Think of a journey. Imagine going on a journey from, say, Perth, to some remote part of Scotland, somewhere you're not familiar with, let's say in the North Coast, let's say Thurso. And someone goes from Perth to Thurso and it takes them, let's say, four hours. What was the rate? Well, we can't tell, we don't know how far it is to Thurso. But we do know that if someone else did the same journey and it took them eight hours, although we don't know their rate either, we can see, because it's taking the second person twice as long, they're obviously going half as fast. So, sometimes if all you have is a time, you cannot work at the actual rate, but you can get something to go on. The relative rate is 1 over the time. 1 over the time. So let's use this little formula to come up with an answer here. How, if how fast was this reaction? What was the rate? Well, 1 over time, 1 over 30. In this imaginary reaction, the rate is 1 over time, that's 1 over 30 seconds, and 1 over 30, if I look for my calculator, here we are, 1 over 30, would be 1 divided by 30, comes to 0 0.033. 0 0.033. 0 0.033, what? Well, it's 1 over seconds, that's seconds to the negative 1. Interestingly, you could express this in the following way. You could say that rate is 1 over time. And it's useful to know that because sometimes if you're given the rate, you can ask to work out the time. Now, here we were given the time and asked to work out the rate. What if we had to work back the way? Suppose we had a rate of, say, 0 0.02. Then what time produced that rate? No. The question is, what time produced that rate? We know the rate, 0 0.02. So we can see from here, time is 1 over the rate. We're just rearranging this. Time is 1 over rate. 1 over 0 0.02, once again, let's get the calculator, 1 divided by 0 0.02 equals, try again, 1 divided by 0 0.02, 50 is the answer. 50 what? Well, it's time, 50 seconds. An experiment which took 50 seconds would have a rate. 0 0.02. That's the fourth point covered. Rather, the third point covered, and the fourth one coming up. The fourth one is rate graphs. Now, you might recall that earlier on, I drew a graph like this. 
And you'll know from experience that if you change the conditions, you can change the shape of the graph. For example, you could have a situation where the reaction produced the same volume of gas, but maybe faster. You could have a situation where the reaction produced not only, say, half as much gas, but it took longer to do so. So let's have a look at the kind of thing that could crop up there. If we take a reaction such as, say, adding hydrochloric acid to magnesium, let's suppose we had the following conditions. Let's suppose we had 40 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid, and the concentration of the acid is 2 moles per litre. And with these particular conditions, we produce this particular graph. A graph showing how the hydrogen gas is produced over time. Here is the volume of hydrogen over time. And all we're saying is that this shape of graph came from this set of conditions. But what would happen if we change the conditions? Let's say, for example, we used half as much acid, let's say 20 cubic centimetres. But, let's say we also change the concentration. How about a concentration of 4 moles per litre? What kind of graph would that produce? Well, there are two things you must ask yourself. What effect would that have on the volume of gas produced? And what effect would this have on the rate of reaction? Well, look at the rate. The rate is affected by concentration. If we make this twice as concentrated, it's going to go twice as fast. So this set of conditions will produce a faster reaction, a steeper line. What about the quantity of gas produced? Well, the quantity of gas produced will depend on how much acid we have. Is this more acid than that? Is this less acid than that? Or is it the same? It's the same, isn't it? Because although we've only got half as much acid, we're compensating by having it twice as concentrated. If you apply the formula N equals CV to these, you'll find that 20 times 4 is the same as 40 times 2. So this will produce the same volume of gas. It will produce it faster, however. Why? Because the concentration is higher. So there we are. The graph will look something like that. It's very important to clearly label your graph. You could use colours, you could use dotted lines, you could do something to identify each graph. Let's take another change of conditions. Let's suppose, instead of hydrochloric acid, we use sulfuric acid. Let's go back to these original conditions. So, the only change this time is that we're using sulfuric acid. Does that make any difference? You might think, well, one acid is much the same as another, but watch out. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4, and it's the hydrogen ions in the acid which are actually reacting. So sulfuric acid is twice the acid that hydrochloric acid is. So although this might look to be the same, this is twice that. So, what do we have? Effectively, twice the concentration of hydrogen ions, okay, because you've got H2 is twice the concentration, this will be faster, this will be faster than the white line. And not only that, it's actually twice as much acid. Instead of, H, instead of HCl, it's H2SO4. This is capable of producing twice as much gas. So not only will this be faster than the original one, but produce a line twice as high, not this amount of gas, but twice as much gas as the original one. Watch out for sulfuric acid. Because it's H2SO4, it packs twice the punch of a normal acid like hydrochloric acid. And that's it. We've covered the four points. Draw the apparatus carefully and label it. Average rate. Well, average rate, as we said, you need to know the amount and the time. Look at the graph. Read the graph carefully. Whatever you do, don't be sloppy. Look carefully at the axes. Find the correct amount and the correct time. It's a simple calculation. If all you have to go on is the time, if all that's happening is you see a colour change, then use the formula 1 over time. And realise that you can use this formula to work out the time using the rate, or the rate using the time. And then finally, if you're asked to draw these graphs, think. Ask yourself, how does the change affect the rate, in other words, the steepness of the line, and how does the change affect the volume of gas produced?